So after transcription has occurred and you've made RNA, you haven't just made any type of RNA, typically you've made a specific type of RNA. You've either made a messenger RNA that's going to contain the nucleotide sequence that will code for amino acids. You'll be making a transfer RNA that will be used to carry specific amino acids. Uh, or you'll have made ribosomal RNA that will then assemble together with uh, other pieces of RNA and the proteins uh, in order to build the ribosome that will actually perform that process. I'll do a kind of quick world review of that with some modifications and differences with um, bacterial um, uniqueness you know, for these particular processes. So messenger RNA. So messenger RNA contains the code. for the amino acid sequence. Now, it typically has to be modified. Right? Now, in eukaryotes, there are introns and they have to be removed. We have no introns here, so no introns uh, in bacteria. So we don't have to worry about intron removal. So that bit of it doesn't, doesn't really go on here. The other two things that typically happen to the eukaryotic um, messenger RNA are the addition of a five prime cap and a poly A tail. The five prime cap doesn't happen here in bacteria, right? Which is it's a very important part. You should be familiar with it for eukaryotic cells. It will come in a little bit play later with uh, viral infections uh, when we get into that, but uh, and viral messenger RNA. But here, bacteria don't don't have this. Instead, what they have is something called a uh, shine Jill Garno. Yeah, A R N O. I always put an E uh, sequence. So this takes the place of the five prime cap. Okay, so this is going to be uh, the site for binding of. Uh, 16S ribosomal RNA. So for the ribosomal RNA, also we'll get to here, uh, it's going to be made in pieces. All right, so we're going to have 16S, 23S, and 5S. This is going to be this is different than in uh, eukaryotes. You have 18, uh, 28, um, 5.8, uh, and the 5. Here it's a little bit different. So, but the small subunit, if you remember. SU, the small subunit is the 16S ribosomal RNA. There is a complementary binding site in 16S ribosomal RNA for the Shine Delgarno sequence. And the Shine Delgarno sequence you can see is here. Uh, it's this GGA, GGU sequence. Start of the messenger RNA coding. So it's before, you know, it's before the coding region. So it's before the coding region, uh, and what it really is is the again a, a binding site, okay. site, the site for binding of this. So it kind of takes the place of the five prime cap. Um, the transfer RNA is going to be essentially the same uh, in bacteria as it is in eukaryotic cells, and function pretty much the same way. Uh, amino acyl transfer RNA synthetase, an enzyme essentially will read transfer RNAs and attach the proper um, amino acids to them based on information in anticodon loops, TCIC loops, D loops, other places it's going to check for uh, content to recognize specific ones. Um, and then the ribosomal RNA will be manufactured into small and large subunits. So what you will have then here is a piece of messenger RNA with instead of a five prime cap, it'll have the shine Delgarno sequence. Okay. Then what will have occur is the small subunit, 16S ribosomal RNA will bind here. All right, that's necessary for initiation. Typically, as part of the initiation process, is you have uh, the methionine transfer RNA. That reads until it will find a start codon. You know, again, you have our AUG as the start codon. So here at the start codon, we'll then get the large subunit to come in. Oops. 
Whoops, wrong. And they're binding sites within the large subunit. And then what's going to happen then here, um, so we have large subunit, that's ribosomal RNA. And the small subunit is ribosomal RNA. We have our messenger RNA here, and then this little cloverleafed guy there is that's carrying the amino acid. So this is a particular amino acid here. Uh, that's our transfer RNA. And that'll initiate the whole process. And after that occurs, then you'll just get elongation uh, of the sequence. So that's the first amino acid. Then what will happen is it will read the next codon here. So say CCU, for example, the next transfer RNA comes in with the next amino acid, the amino acid that is bound to a transfer RNA that has the anticodon for CCU. So it'll have a GGA here. And then that'll be added. So the large subunit is what makes the new peptide bonds between these, and then that process will progress. Okay. And then ultimately, in the end, you'll end up with uh, a sequence of amino acids joined together with peptide bonds. So amino acid 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. You know, it, it could be could be fairly long, right? And so that's going to be the, your end product, your end product. Is a polypeptide. That's the end product of the, the gene expression. So the, the DNA codes for the RNA, we always say RNA codes for protein. But that's specifically following the line of genes that code for messenger RNA, which go for protein. But we do have these other types of RNA that have equally important roles Without them, there there are no there is no protein synthesis. There is no you know, then translation or, or manufacturing you know of the um, actual end products. We need those as well, and there are the genes for those you know as well. And they are tend to be more functional and carrying out uh, their specific roles. The messenger RNA is the one that's more variable, accounting for uh, genetic variation in the proteins, which then might carry out different actions within the, the within the cell. Uh, so now there are different places where this can be regulated uh, as well. So our regulation now of processes, so we'll come back here. So for gene expression, and now this polypeptide, before I kind of get into that whole regulation part, uh, the last little bit here, that polypeptide is unlikely to be immediately functional. Okay, So it usually requires processing To function. One of those types of processing uh, are the folding by groups of proteins called HSPs or also known as molecular chaperones. All right, and that's going to be important here just to, in just a second. So In terms of the whole process of gene expression, when we talk about regulation, uh, in your PowerPoint in my class, there's a, there's a slide that actually lists all these things in a row, all the different places and all, and all the different steps. You you'll, should be able to find that. So from the DNA level, we get regulation at the actual transcriptional level. So will a gene be read or not? And there's all different ways you know, that could happen. We require transcription factors, proteins that have to bind to the DNA. We have activators, we have repressors, we have all these different DNA binding proteins. So there's all these different DNA binding proteins involved in all sorts of different parts, but uh, of this whole process. But in general, what they're doing is that they're either Speeding up, slowing down, turning on, turning off the ability of the DNA to be copied or transcribed into RNA. Right, so that's that's our first level. Once we get the RNA, let's say we get transcription, it's not over with. It's not like a done deal that okay, it was it was copied, so now it's over with. The RNA still requires its own processing. So you have to actually bind the amino acids to the transfer RNAs, the uh, messenger RNA. 
uh, has to be modified. The ribosome has to be assembled. Those processes can be stopped or blocked as well. All right, so they can, I'm not going into that, but they can be blocked, which means we can block that, uh, that, uh, that machinery, the ribosomal machinery, so that the process will not read the messenger RNA. So if we interfere with the shine delgado sequence, for example, then we won't get the 16S ribosomal um, subunit binding to it. We won't be able to initiate the, the whole process. If that works and we actually get the information read and everything comes together and we make the new polypeptide, we just said here, it's typically not functional. So you can copy the DNA into RNA. You can then actually use that RNA to make a polypeptide, but actually at this point, we, we can stop it here. So we can actually stop. Uh, it can be, can be stopped, all right, at this level. So we might stop the processing to function it. Uh, we might inhibit the molecular chaperones from being able to fold those polypeptides into their proper form and then that protein isn't expressed. Or it could just be held off. Uh, there are some proteins that might be required in the cell, um, but they don't need to be functioning all the time. So they are made and then they're essentially turned off. And then when the cell needs them, another signal would bind that actually removes the, whatever molecule is bound to that particular protein and activates it. And then the protein becomes functional uh, again. So that final, final step is not, again, a, a done deal. You can actually stop or regulate the process at any of the levels, at the DNA level, at the RNA level, or at the polypeptide level, right? So there are different ways that, so that we call it um, the transcriptional level, the translational, you know, uh, level, or then the processing level for the, the protein. So just kind of be, in general, familiar. First off, you really have to know the whole process, the details of transcription and translation. Uh, and then what you need to do is have this overview of from those steps, where can can these things occur? This is also going to be important for you um, come the final exam, what we talk about uh, viral uh, life cycles and how a virus works and what, what a virus does and the different and the classifications of different types of virus um, in that some virus are going to have DNA, some virus are going to have RNA. Some of the DNA is going to be double-stranded. Some will be single-stranded. The ones that have RNA will have sometimes what we call plus sense or minus sense, meaning the plus sense is going to be essentially messenger RNA. The minus sense is going to be the sort of the sequence of what would be an anticodon. All right, so it would be like the template sequence, one that's not actually uh, read, so it's not the actual coding sequence. Um, and so... What you need to know in that case is if I, I say a starting point is this type of RNA, how is the gene expression occur than in a virus? Or how are the proteins uh, expressed in a virus? You'll need to know, can you go from that point forward? Do you have to go from that point backwards before you can go forward again? And if you understand this process, it will make that very easy uh, to actually study. If you don't understand this process, um, then that's going to be very confusing for you later on. Um, so uh, make sure you can go through you know, all the basics and know kind of the, the terminology. And that'll be pretty much it for um, regulation. Again, some of the PowerPoint slides have some good overall summaries of, uh, of this regulation and then all the terminology.